Right, so over the Christmas break, as you're all aware, old mate spent a majority of it working on his 80 series Land Cruiser. A few things needed to be fixed. Obviously we needed to fix the brakes, but also I was determined to try and figure out what was going on with the outer wheel bearing on the front right hand side. And I thought I'd fix the problem. Well, guess what? The front right hand outer wheel bearing issue has reared its ugly head again. It's 80 series time here at the Backyard Tech Channel. This one, we're gonna try and figure out what went wrong and how I can fix the problem with that front right outer wheel bearing once and for all. G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in, it is 80 series time again here at the Backyard Tech Channel for a Monday morning and we're going to try and once and for all fix this problem I've got with the front outer right hand wheel bearing. Now before we get into this video though, we've got to go through the formalities because we all know the trouble I get into if I don't do this. So let's get the formalities out of the road first, then we'll get stuck into the problem. I am in no way, shape or form a fully qualified mechanic. Therefore, if you are following along with this service repair and or information video, you are doing this at your own risk. So you have been warned. So over the Christmas break, I thought I'd fixed all the problems I was having with the 80 series at the mechanical level. We'd done the brakes, I'd fixed up a few other bits and pieces, and I thought I'd fixed up the problem with the outer wheel bearing on the front right hand side. Only the outer wheel bearing issues reared its ugly head again. So what does this mean? We've got to take the whole front right end apart again. Now that means obviously taking the tire off, taking the cap off, taking the hub off, the whole kit and caboodle. Now the upside is I don't have to do the brakes. The downside is, is getting that front hub off. Now remember, I'm full-time four-wheel drive, permanently locked hubs, right? So it makes it a little bit more tedious. The biggest problem we, you've got, and this is where a lot of people can't fathom it. How come it can take so long to get the hub off? Simple. The damn tapers are your problem. Okay, those rotten tapers are your problem because they get stuck in there. The idea is that it prevents the hub from moving. If you've got a four-wheel drive, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you haven't got a four-wheel drive, you should still know what I'm talking about. So we've got to go through the whole process again. So that's jacking the car up, putting it on the car stand, right? Then we've got to get the tire off. We've got to get the hub off, which means removing the um, hub bolts, getting the hub tapers out, pulling the hub off. And then we've got to get in, we've got to get the split ring off as well. And then we've got to get into it, all right? So we've got to get all that done and I've got to get it done today because it's the only opportunity I'll have between now and probably Easter to fix the problem once and for all. Um, and it's got to get fixed. Now, for those that don't actually know anything about this um, or seem to find it a little bit hard to understand, an 80 series Land Cruiser can't exactly go that fast. Some people seem to think that a big engine means you can crank your car up over 160 k's an hour or 100 miles an hour. A lot of people who have an 80 series Land Cruiser get what's known as the 80 series wobbles around 140 k's an hour. Not that you're supposed to be going that fast. The problem is I'm getting the 80 series wobbles at 105 k's an hour because the front right is wobbling like that. So we've got to fix this wheel bearing. The other problem is, and this is what a lot of people also don't understand, a vibrating wheel like that just doesn't hurt your tires. It can do other damage as well. Okay, it can ruin steering components. It can ruin suspension components, your panhard arms, um, your bushes. It can, it can cause chaos with 
everything to do with steering and front suspension on the front the front hand side of your car so it's not just your tire life you've got to worry about and uneven wear on your tires it's your steering and suspension components that can also be damaged from the severe vibration at higher speeds so i have to fix this problem and as i've said um the last couple of nights I don't have the money to replace that front right tire in a couple of months time because that's all it'll take to wear out the tread. So here at the Backyard Tech Channel, let's see if old mate can't fix this outer wheel bearing issue once and for all. Let's get into it. All right, 180 series, one Hilux, move Hilux down driveway and then move 80 series back, uh, at least onto the straight area. And then I'll, uh, I'll have to jack it up. Um, now what I am gonna do though, is I'll move it back. I'll then put some bricks behind the rear wheels to keep it uh, in place. Now I have got a, um, I have got car stand and everything to put it on. Oh, you could probably get away with doing it on the jack but I'd still feel safer putting it on a car stand anyway, just because, and this is what a lot of people, you know, seem to think it's safe, but my personal opinion is you're absolutely nuts if you're gonna be working on the front of your car like this on a jack, okay? Um, so I'll put it on the car stand. You can sort of start to see there's a bit of damage to the front right tire as it is now because of the vibration. I'm getting a little bit of an uneven wear there, so we are going to have to try and fix this up pretty quickly. So, I'm going to back out of here because there's not enough room to turn around in. So, I will move Hilux and uh, we'll put, uh, I'll put Hilux on front lawn. Um, and then I'll put Land Cruiser in middle of driveway and uh, we'll start to get the front end done. So I'll, I'll get all the tools and everything that I need uh, to get it done. Um, 12 mil, I think it's 12 mil socket, hammer, screwdrivers, because obviously I've got to get the tapers out. Um, I'll show you a little trick that I was shown on how to get the tapers out very easily without having to bang the hell out of the front hub. Um, and then we'll, uh, yeah, see, unfortunately I can't, I can't do it where it is because what I was thinking of doing was if I had enough room, I'd just jack it up in place. But you can see up here, I don't have enough room to actually, to actually work, which is, well, less than ideal. All right, let me get everything organized and we'll come back. All right, so there is just a little bit of movement in there, enough for this to be loose. So... What I'm going to have to do is undo all this again and check that inner, um, inner nut. Because remember, there's two nuts here. You've got one that's about here. You've got a spacer ring and then you've got this outer one. So I've got to check the both of them. Well, as I suspected, what's happened here was the both nuts were still loose. So like I said, this is the inner nut. This is what you've got to be careful of. The inner nut was loose as well. So they were both loose. So remember, this is the last wheel I did the CVs on, right? So we've now tightened this nut up. The other half's father's helped with this. So this half's now been tightened up, right? And you can see here, there's no movement in the wheel. So now what we're gonna do is put it all back together. And then I've obviously got to do, redo the seal here for the, um, for the hub. All right, so we have inner and outer nuts tightened up. We've got the lock plates in place, so one back, one forward. Now, uh, this is the same, I believe, if you've got the patrol as well. So that one in there is folded back into the vehicle. This one over here is folded outwards of the vehicle. So you've got your inner washer locked up or your inner nut. You've got the space, and then you've got your outer one locked up, and that ain't going to move. I can tell you that right now. So the next thing to do is put it all back together. 
all right so next thing to do just clean down your surface of your where your hub's going to mount to okay so you got a full if you're four wheel, full time four wheel drive this is what your hub's basically going to look like so i've cleaned both surfaces now next thing to do as i've done before a fine bead of gasket maker around here and this is as i said this is what uh, we use is foamer gasket right this is a non-hardening gasket what you don't want is a hardening gasket because it'll make it nigh on impossible if not impossible to actually get your hub off if it hardens up so i'll put a thin bead of this on and then i'll put the hub back on so there's the bead now i put it on the hub um on the hub lock but you can if you want you can go around and put it on that and we just line it back up again It goes the other way, doesn't it? Hang on. Pull that out. It will go on. Hang on a minute. So, hub's back on. Split ring's back on. Now, you do tapers and everything like that. And uh, as I said, if you do own an 80 series, you know how to do this anyway. So, I'll do this and then go for a spin. Just as a matter of interest, I do these up the same way I do the wheels up. So, that way, all right. So you don't end up warping it. The same thing you would do with a six bolt tire. Alrighty, let's uh, let's go for a spin. And we're listening for that telltale rattle of the uh, of the uh, front right wheel bearing. reason we're listening for that is because the wheel bearing needs to be tight and if it's not we're going to jack the car back up and uh, go again the other thing we're going to do is get the car up to 100 k's an hour and see whether or not we've got the uh, Land Cruiser wobbles so we want to check all that out and make sure because if not I've got to jack the car up again and go again realize the uh, dash cam time is actually an hour out <laughs> it's actually 10 past 11 there's NBN co working on one of the Sputniks in the area working on a public holiday that's not normally what happens that's one of the Sputniks or nodes as people like to call them especially if you're on FTTN NBN alrighty so what we're going to do is go down this highway ahead of us and uh, see whether or not we've still got the shakes Astra. Hello. Big auger.
aiming for 105 k's an hour to see whether or not I start the rattles. That's good. I can get to 110 k's. The road's not exactly smooth. But I haven't got that awful rattle I had. I don't have that grinding noise either, which is nice. So I'm doing, according to my GPS, I'm doing 105 k's an hour. According to the speedo, I'm doing 100, oh jeez, my speedo's miles out. Have a go. The speedo's doing nearly 115, according to the GPS, is 108, so... There's 110 k's an hour. Hello. So... That's really good. The old mate's fixed his problem. We'll uh, we'll check it on the on the return trip. Check the brakes. And the other thing it was doing was rattling under cruise, right? Which is like this. So. We're checking to see whether or not it's going to do the same thing here. And it doesn't, which is good. So we will throw a U-bolt. Or can I no longer throw a U-bolt here? Able to throw a Yui here. I might not be able to chuck a new bolt. Because some idiots smashed and graffitied that sign, which means. Well, I can try. However, I think it's just going to be safer for me to turn right and not do a U bolt and try and figure somewhere else to chuck a Yui. traffic for the public holiday Monday, let me tell you. I can, I'm just going to throw the U-bolt anyway. No rattles so far. Still no rattles, which is nice. No more, no funny rattles going through the steering wheel, which is even better. According to my GPS, I'm doing 104 kilometers an hour, 105 k's an hour, 106. I don't know what that is on the GPS, but I'm looking at my, I don't know what, According to my Navman GPS here on the dash, uh, I'm doing 108, a little bit quick, 107, 106, 104, all right. So now what I've got to do is take it around where a lot of the rattle has been occurring, okay, which I'll show you where that is, because you can hear it, this is the thing.
let's hope I've fixed this problem once and for all. What you want to do in this case is to make it that you can feel the wheel bearing if you've gone through this problem before. It is frustrating, I know. That 80 series in front of this V-dub's got mud tyres. When your wheel bearing is doing this, especially if you haven't got the wheels tight enough, <coughs> depending on the condition of the road, when you're just coasting, the wheel can start to vibrate. And that's when you know you've got wheel bearing issues. People often say, oh, you, you panic about nothing. You know. Come on. No worries. So where the problem is, and this is why I use this area to test the wheel bearing, is because of, this is gonna be like trying to thread a needle, the Hyundai will not wait for me. around to this roundabout down the bottom here and do a big U bob around it or as other people call it throw a Yui. I'm going to chuck a U bolt and see what happens. I'm going to go right around the roundabout. First off let the Commodore pass with the speed boat. Alright here we go. So we're listening for that loose wheel bearing. over the road reflector still nothing there I'd say I fixed the problem which is really good big Australian flag at the back of the Falcon U all right now the next point it doesn't vibrate getting into the driveway And that would be a no. So there we go. Wheel bearing fixed. Which is really, really good. Except I've just realised the other half's come out, but you can't see it. So tightening up that inner bearing. Alright. And the outer bearing and making sure that lock washer is in the right spot has saved it. Which mean, now means I should end up with the tyre wear on the right front becoming a little bit more even than it has been, okay? Because it'll obviously even out in time. So there we are, wheel bearing fixed, once and for all. Touch wood. Catch you later, guys. Cheers.